I guess we're back on. That red light's on, Coach Parker. We're here. Brian Newbert. <laughs> really? We're on, and we're glad to be back. Coach Jared Parker, he needs no introduction. Uh, maybe he does to his family just because it's been a long <laughs> stretch. But uh, Jared, uh, uh, now the father of two, we may talk about that later. But we're going to hit on, on, on what, what was National Signing Day, which uh, they could change that to NCD and maybe call it National Circus Day. It's a... Uh, it's a crazy thing that you'll be able to write a good book about this when when you're when you're old and gray and can retire from this. I, I assume, but it's a, it's a, it gets wilder by the by the year. I assume sometimes it does. And like we said before the show, I, I mean, I think it is for everybody. Yeah. But it is a um, it is a circus. That's a that's a good word. Um, it's fun, and we love what we do. And recruiting is a big piece of it. Um, but it's certainly becoming more and more eventful. I'll say that. What can change to make it more human? It seems because it seems like it's a circus now, but it's trending downward before it's trending upward. What can change to make things you know better yeah, for everybody, not just coaches, right. but recruits and whoever else? It's so that's a tough question, and I, I mean, and I shouldn't say that. It's probably tough to answer because mm -hmm. I think that the whole discussion of the early signing period and all those things I think maybe helps it, but all that's going to happen is is it's going to become a circus that day too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, so it's just going to I think resurface, but it will allow some guys as Coach Hazel's really said, because I think he really believes in it, to say, all right, if we do this, at least the guys that you know want to come to Purdue, in our case, you're saving, one, you're saving money mm -hmm. and time to be able to continue recruiting the rest of your class with kids that already have it done. And I think that would at least slow things down for a kid and not make it as big of a, because to a 17 and 18 year old kid getting that much attention, it's hard for a kid to say no at that age, mm -hmm. you know? and. I think when you get all that attention, it turns into that. And then before you start saying no, the other coach is saying, well, we've got a chance. So, you know, but I don't know past the early signing period. I don't, Brian, I don't know if with social media and all that is going on, and I know that's a huge part of it, and I don't know how it becomes because there's too much attention given to the kids that we're recruiting for them to be able to sort through a lot of the stuff that happens, you know, to make it more of a true good relationship and stuff. And the good thing is with this class, it's been pretty – We've been able to do that a lot, you know. Age 18, they're not fully mature, and I mean, it's just it's just a nature of. I mean, I can think of just. I have had two children that have been in college age and had to make the decision without athletics for the most part, and that's a hard enough decision as the first place. And then and then you get to the world of Twitter and, and everything else, where other people are telling the other things, or you want to make a splash, it just adds to it. Sure, I mean that's it. I think, and, and it isn't the kids' fault. I mean, that's the society we're in, and all those yeah. things. Yeah. But you can just see kids really, some kids do a great job with it, and there's some kids that just get so engrossed in the Twitter and all that, and you see it by <laughs> that it yeah. becomes a daily thing. Hey, here's my top three, here's my top five. I'm back to three, I'm back to five. The fans are hitting them up on Twitter, and before you know it, their lives are scrolling through a timeline to, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to be recruited, and they start loving it. We have some good questions here. We're going to, you no, you also answer. are not just people. I don't know how many people understand this. You're not just recruiting the kid. You're recruiting a lot of people around the kid, and that's a lot of attention for people who might not otherwise have gotten used to having a lot of attention and in a lot of ways a lot of pressure, too. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of voices in guys' ears, too. Yeah, amen. You, I mean, you're talking about the kid. Mm -hmm. The parents are now getting on Twitter. Yeah. You know, so you're, you're obviously communicating with parents and family members, You're, you're and then – all the other people that are at the school, the coach gets involved, good, bad, or indifferent, and then you've got a so you've got a party of people that are getting a ton of attention, and sometimes it's dealt with wonderfully, and sometimes yeah. not so much. We had uh, we used to think it was but five years ago it was message board stuff, and that stuff you know anymore is it's 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 Twitter, it's 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 as much on that as anything else because that's where that's where they're all going. We had a lot of questions for you. Uh, are there any available recruits that Purdue could possibly sign? And Darryl, Coach Daryl Hazel did mention, didn't rule that out, and there's been some publicized ones that I don't know that we can, we can talk about here with the coach here. But uh, is there, a, I mean, there could be a possibility that two or three other guys could could land in this class? Certainly. Um, good. That's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I let, um, obviously, Coach Hazel uh, did, did answer to that some yesterday. Yeah. And, um, to obviously to there are out. scholars. There are still scholars. We've got some room, and um, there's certainly some still good football players out there, and will be, and we'll be very, very patient. I know Coach will be very, very patient and make sure we make good decisions, but it's kind of nice to have some back there for moving forward, you know. 
Yeah, wait. Um, Brian, go ahead. So it's a definite maybe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it good. seems like you guys, obviously, you take on a new job. It takes a, a, a period of time to get your whole operation up and running. Where are you right now in terms of being ahead on future classes, in terms of having your whole behind the scenes operation up and going? Well, me and you talked yesterday. I think that, um, you know, from our staff down, mm -hmm. you know, with the addition of Mike Wall, we have a graduate, graduate assistant now in recruiting in Austin, and with Sam Orton, the guy that was with us who last year, who's continued to grow in the process of recruiting, and we were able to hire him, coach hired him full time. So now you have what everyone else is doing and have we've got our own system and room that pretty much they watch they watch film till their eyes bleed and put us in position to make sure we're evaluating after they kind of go through who is and who isn't and then uh, after we do that we're able to so we're able to coach football recruit the guys we need to be recruiting and go out so we put and as you said but being here two years now and being able to do that we've had finally been able to put the system mm -hmm. together that allows us not only to recruit just the class we're in but we're so much further along in the kids that have been on this campus for the 2016 class, and that's what we have to do in order to, to get where we want to go and continue to get the kids that need to be here um, in West Lafayette. You know, I don't think it'll ever go the way of basketball, but football is maybe getting a little bit like basketball in which there's a lot of attention on a lot of players, and that means you're recruiting freshmen, sophomores, juniors more than ever, and that's a lot for coaches who have to be engaged with their current athletes to handle. Is this getting to the point where – there's, there, there might be a divide one day between a coaching staff and a recruiting staff? Um, I could certainly see it. It could happen easily if, if everybody's not careful. I think we're, we're, we're a little bit more you know, uh, slower in the process as far as sophomore year, freshman year guys. You know, mm -hmm. you still, you, but you've got to be ready you know, because it's one of those things where everybody else is doing it. Yeah. And if, if we're not doing it, then, then we're behind. So we're working really hard to stay ahead, but also be accurate in uh, who we take, mm -hmm. you know. Question uh, just about some, some individual, Tim Faison, who, who uh, questioned, could he grow into a defensive end in time? Uh, and I may have missed it yesterday. It seemed like they were talking, you were talking about him potentially as at, at defensive end or defensive tackle, but to talk about what he has brought to the table and, and a number of guys that, you know, you recruit them in certain positions, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're where they're going to end up playing on Saturdays. No question. And you just you do not know what a, what a kid's body's going to do when they get in our weight room and start eating the way, you know, the yeah. right way. And I think that uh, he's a guy that is so long and has such a great body um, that he's going to, you know, I, Coach Shoup says sometimes in our office, has a high floor, and he does. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that Tim's going to be able to do on that side of the football for, for Coach Hudson and those guys. Um, he'll certainly be in Coach Freeman's room, but it, the longer he gets and the bigger he gets, if something happens two years down the road, you, you put that kid, you know, we put those guys in positions to make plays to the best of their ability, and he's certainly one that can. Yeah. You obviously coach the tight ends. You've got a big opportunity, shall we say, a tight end this year. Can either of those freshmen uh, help you right away, you feel like? Well, it'll, it'll, time will tell. We certainly hope so. You know, I, I think it's any time you say, yes, of course, you know, um, it's a little scary to say that at that position. There's some spots where kids, it's easier, I would say, to get in there and go play. That's mm -hmm. the way we use them. He's got to be a, a physically capable guy first and then be able to learn it all and do it. Um, so in that part, but you certainly like both those guys' bodies and, and they'll have a chance to. Um, but is losing as many as we did, you still feel pretty good about uh, what's coming back um, because there's some guys there that I think that by the time it's all said and done, you guys will really, really like what they're about with the guys we have here. Perhaps a better way to ask that question would be not can they help you right away, but do they have to help you right away? Yeah, I don't think so. You know, I don't think so. And if they do, it's just an added bonus. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that. I do. I think that the guys we have on our campus right now will surprise a lot of people. I do. I really believe that. And I'm, and I'm not a guy to say that just to, to say it on the air. I think that I think with Cole Herdman and Jordan Jurasovich, who's going to be a pleasant surprise for everybody, you know, and Jonathan Curry, those guys, there's a chance there for, for those three guys that got some stuff in special teams and those things. And then some younger guys are still building and having good off seasons right now. So it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah, Jordan Jurasovich certainly impressed his ability to, to like to hit people mm -hmm. on the front end, and uh, that's that's what you want. Good question for me that I have no idea what the answer is. A uh, uh, comment from Randy, if a player does not commit on the first day, meaning yesterday, what are the rules for contacting him at, at that potential recruit from this point forward? Are there new rules in place after the first day, or is it a, it's a period, right? Is yep. it not? It's a week. 
Or it's it's two it's um it's two days before and after signing day. We're able to, to do a lot with those kids and yeah. call them a bunch. Then it kind of kicks back to old rules where we're, we're limited in what we can call, what we can send, all those things after these next two days. Um, but then, just to fully answer, you, you can then, those kids can still take official visits. Right. Um, we just can't go out there. And the rule is now we're off the road. We can't go see them anymore. Um, they've got to come to us uh, starting this weekend again. So a kid that does not sign can still come to campus. We just can't go out to them. And so that is where, where some of that circus part comes in because you can talk to them a lot in the last two days. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of phone calls and text messages going back when you see somebody that may be wavering or is that, is that what is it? What is, what, how does that process work? I mean, how do you try to handle that situation where you have a guy that you're, you know, you may be here seeing it on Twitter and maybe coming from somebody else. You, you, you got to get to what the truth is, I sure. assume. So, yeah, you're, I mean, it's amazing yesterday and all the days before you're, you're constantly checking kids. Yeah what's going on, what are they saying, and all those things, and then what everybody else is saying. But you're right, you, you, you kind of can drive yourself crazy with it a little <laughs> bit. Um, but it's tough because the kid can, it's unlimited. So we can, the, any, we and or anybody else can call anytime they want to, all day, every day, call parents, call moms, dads, coaches, and everybody. So when you get, in, and what do you do, tell the kid to shut his phone off, you know, yeah. um, which some kids did, you know, but it's, it's just a, a tough thing because there's no, there's no way a guy, if a guy feels like calling, he's going to call. Yeah. You know? And they start to fax it in? Is that yeah. true? How in the heck do you even get that done anymore? I mean, well, you can't. I know. But it's so, my understanding Peyton Truitt had his hand delivered. <laughs> he did. So in certain situations like that, I, can't they take pictures now and stuff too? They, can't, they cannot email it and PDF they, it. They right, have to fax it. It has to be a fax. And, of course, Holy I mean, it, it's, so we used a little bit different. I don't even know how to fax it. Yeah, yeah, it's like an email fax system, yeah. but it's still a fax. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's a, I mean, we I laugh every true. year. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's, you're still, we're still using a fax machine. The fax uh, lobby in Washington DC obviously has a has has some clout <laughs> so that they they've gotten college football recruiting to prop up their their antiquated technology yeah, yeah. clearly we got we had a lot of uh, comments okay, since Matt Rector's here we'll say hats off to the Purdue Media Publications department the customized photo announcements were professionally done and one of the best I saw at any school this year I I, I know that uh, you guys have put a lot of effort into you want substance and there's only so many things you can do in terms of image to, but uh, you want to portray a certain image uh, just with with kids that commit, but also uh, once they uh, uh, once they've committed, once they've signed, it's a it's a big deal to kind of continue that process with them until you break them down once they get here. Sure. Oh yeah. The, the deep recruiting. <laughs> yeah. Process, yeah. Huh? Let's just, uh, <laughs> we get our. Guys let me know when that day starts. Yeah. Uh, that I'm sure. The deep recruitment. Um, yeah. No, it's been, but it, I, you know, our staff and everybody in marketing and all did a, they did. We did a great yeah, job. Agree. It was a great collaborative effort, and some of the graphics and those things they pushed. I mean, we had some some people really do a great job for us. Yeah, Markel Jones is somebody that you uh, that you were uh, very much involved with, and obviously the, par the parade and, and I, I guess he was Max Preps first team All American team. But what what about what's he bring to the table? He's a Again, a very impressive individual just being around him. Not a big guy. Uh, he's powerful. He showed on film yesterday about how he likes to run people over, and I know Brian's seen him a couple times. But uh, what do you love about him? Yeah, I think not a tall guy. Yeah. But Markell is thick, and he's going to be really thick. You know, that's the thing. I think that everybody is underrated as he was. I'm certainly not saying he's underrated because we got him, but he is, he is underrated nationally. He, he is so, so good with his lower half. He's got great hips. He's hard to tackle. He is broad. I mean, he's got big thighs, kind of Marshall Falkish as far as how he looks, how big his lower half is. He's got great ball skills and stuff. And, and you know, all the other intangible things. He's a great guy yeah. who is hungry and is here for a reason. I mean, he wants to play football here. He wants to play in the Big Ten. And he speaks, me and him have spoke a lot through the recruiting process about how, you know, what he knows he was under recruited a little bit. And he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because of it. And we that's the guys we, we want to play with here. And I think he, um, he'll he have a great career here. I'm not a college football coach, nor will I ever be. <laughs> but it seems like he sees things really well as a running back. He seems like he's really he anticipates things. He sees holes. He sees the field. And he's really aggressive. Yep. That's exactly what you want. No question. I mean, you're right. I mean, his, he has great vision. He does. I mean, his, his vision's good. He knows when to be slow. He knows when to be fast. He knows when to be powerful. You know, he's got, and he's got a little bit of everything in his game that he can do. Um, will he run away from the Big Ten? No, but he won't have to. You know, he won't have to, and he's got great instincts. You're right. 
and he was flying yesterday. That's why we, we spent that. We did a photo shoot yesterday with him, and it was uh, one of our, one of my more um, all my years of doing this. One of my favorite ones with those with the with the Markel and Elijah Sindor. But we talked about the fact he went flying. Of course, it was snowing like crazy by three o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock when we did the photo shoot. But he said, "Oh yeah, we got out there when when uh, when the weather was was good." But that's impressive to me that again an 18 year old comes in and and it's a great that's a great selling point at Purdue. I mean, that's I think long term for you guys as coaches this is a place that you can sell if you can convince them this is you know your program's going in the right direction and academically you've got some great options for them no question we have that, that's what and we've got to find those guys and what our recruiting staff and what we got to do is find those guys you know markel jones wanted to be a pilot his dad's a pilot yeah. you know and a great man and they've got a great family and he wanted that so that's you sell it you know and elijah sindelar wanted to be an engineer yeah you know and what better place to come and be an engineer i mean he wants he wants both. He wants to be a great player and, and, a, and an engineer when he leaves here, and he'll do that. So we, we've got to continue to get find those people and, and get them here. He is going to be busy. That's all yeah. I have to say. Yep. He is going to be just, busy. Obviously, you just talked about Markel Jones and Elijah Sindelar. The common denominator between those two guys is not just that you recruited them, but they both won Mr. Footballs in their respective states. Just how important is that from a notoriety standpoint for Purdue as much as for them? Well, it's huge for us. There's no doubt. We have to we have to, to recruit the best players in the state of Purdue. We have to, and we know that. So there's a lot of pride taken in being able to get those two guys and, and one obviously out of the state of Kentucky, which I took a – I mean, I'm not going to lie, there was yeah. a lot of pride in that. Yeah. You know, and um, not only because of, of where it is, but more importantly because of who he is and who Elijah is. And so it's it's really good that we, you know, we got the, the top two players out of that, those two states. You're, you're from Kentucky. That's you planting the Purdue flag in your home state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with there pride. Go. There you go. Yep. So it's uh, it was um, it was a fun process to go down there and visit with Coach Barnes and get back down to the to the to the state and and be able to get such a great player out of there. Yeah, we're in rapid fire most for questions, but we are. We, I've already shot through to break number two, but we're going to take a two minute break and let everybody catch it. Well, the problem is we'll talk more in between while you are off air too. We'll take a two minute break. Come back for segment three and come up for air on Golden Black Live. We'll see you in a couple minutes.